let me say, first of all, it's great to be on this call with uh, my friends, Dan Muse and Garnet Jenis, who are great public servants and great MPs. And I know that they are champions of the Nepalese community as well. We have a, a large Nepalese community in Brampton, and it makes it um, uh, a really easy place to integrate. If you're a Nepalese company that is that is coming to Canada looking to uh, build a, a base, uh, in Brampton, we speak every language of the world, uh, and uh, we are a mosaic of the world. It's like a mini United Nations, and from every culinary option to sporting amenity, we have it in our city, um, and we are very focused on um, FDI. But BJ, before I get into that, let me just say, uh, I love how family-oriented and community-oriented the Nepalese community is. Uh, I find it, I'm sure Dan and Garnet find this in, in their communities as well, uh, the Nepalese community steps up. And we've seen that during COVID when there was uh, food drives, uh, support for uh, healthcare workers. Uh, I have been so impressed with the community focused nature of the community. Uh, when you have a Nepalese community in your city, they give back and they give back in spades. And it's a beautiful thing to see. You know, for me, it's, it's personal. Um, I've gone to Nepal. I've fallen in love with the people, the culture, the history of the country. My father is 80 now, but when he turned 70, uh, I said to him, to celebrate your 70th birthday, we can go anywhere in the world. And uh, I said, where do you want to go? And he said he wanted to go hiking in Nepal. So 10 years ago, we went hiking in Nepal and the most majestic scenery and vistas that you could imagine were in Nepal. As you know, when you fly into Kathmandu, uh, it's breathtaking. Um, I did... Uh, developed my affinity for momos when I was in uh, Nepal. And I am pleased to report that that's one of the culinary options we have in Brampton. We have some of the best momos in Canada in, in our city. So for anyone interested in um, building um, uh, investment in, in Canada uh, and creating opportunities, I think across the, the, the country, um, you'll find welcoming arms in our country. And there's some real advantages in Canada. Obviously, we've got preferential trade agreements that if you get into the Canadian marketplace, it gives you access uh, elsewhere. We've got talent in terms of human resources. We've got uh, significant human resources, trained, educated workforces, uh, and we're seeing a real focus in areas of um, job growth. So I, I know in Brampton, we're really focusing on the innovation corridor. Um, we've got companies like MDA, uh, which builds the Canada space arm, uh, that are creating significant footprints in our community. And so if you've got some great ideas in, in Nepal and you're looking forward to a landing spot of where you can commercialize those great ideas, I think Canada is uh, a great venue for that. And one thing that I wanted to highlight that may be of interest is Beehive. We just launched in Brampton last year and it's, um, uh, it's sort of on hold right now because of COVID, but it's an international soft landing uh, pad for startups. So we have a partnership with Startup Visa Canada. So we can issue startup visas for tech companies that want to enter the Canadian marketplace. There's one of these in Toronto and now there's one in, in Brampton. Um, and Dan and Garnet, someone that you might know well, Vikram Karana is the one that has set this up for us in, in Brampton. We already welcomed 15 companies um, from around the world, from Japan to Nigeria to India but I'd love to see some Nepalese tech companies come to our city. It is a pathway to citizenship. It's a pathway um, to enter Canada. And uh, uh, the startup visa is something that if, you, if you've got a company in, in Nepal that may this may be applicable to, please look it up and you can email me um, or BJ if you want to get more information. We'd love to, to welcome you to our community. But on that note, I just want to say have a great conference today. And thank you, BJ. I know you have been relentless and determined in creating platforms like this to um, really showcase opportunities for the community. Uh, and it's great to have someone like BJ, who is a, a proud Canadian, but proud of his Nepalese ancestry and trying to do everything he can to bring these uh, great uh, communities together. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Patrick Brown. So especially uh, at this moment, I would like to typically highlight on, on all the frontliners and the business initiative, especially uh, the Nepalese community and all other communities who had been who has been the champion during even during uh, during this pandemic. A lot of our communities um, member has uh, 
started a new venture. And it, it's really, a, a really a, like inspiring to see that uh, people is stepping up and helping each other. And especially when you talk about, uh, uh, when you talk about hiking into Nepal, I was just looking uh, into our previous uh, master, Nadir Patel, he was, uh, uh, he, he had been to trekking to Everest Base Camp. And, uh, uh, and uh, especially uh, as we head towards the normalcy, we really want to uh, take a group of business people from Canada as of uh, FCNCC and uh, go to the Everest uh, Base Camp. And I, I think that would be a great uh, idea to uh, promote uh, the bilateral relationship between Nepal and Canada as well. Uh, thank you, Mayor Brown, once again. And the next speaker we have today is uh, Honorary Consulate General for Toronto uh, of Nepal for, for uh, Toronto, Canada, uh, Mr. Kunjamani Sharma. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Dr. Sharma. Dr. Sharma. You are on mute, Dr. Sharma. You are on mute. Kundar sir, you are on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's perfect, perfect. All right. Thank you. So I was saying thank you, Mr. Podell, Ambassador Dungana, and all the distinguished speakers and uh, um, people that are, uh, you know, working together with the Federation of uh, Nepali Chamber of Commerce and uh, uh, the Nepalese Chamber of Commerce to celebrate this 57th anniversary of uh, <clears throat> Nepal, uh, Canada, Nepal diplomatic relations. I think this is a wonderful uh, takeoff to concentrate on issues of, of uh, <clears throat> mutual interest and intercourse between the two countries, Canada and Nepal. <clears throat> Even though the diplomatic relations was established uh, 60 in 1965, the uh, resident embassy of Nepal uh, in Ottawa, where uh, Mr. Dungana now presides, uh, did not get established until 2012. That did not prevent the linkage between the two countries. Um, I remember one time when, so the, like, like the, the Canadian High Commission in New Delhi, which also represents Canadian Embassy for Nepal, the Nepalese Embassy in Washington, D.C. represented um, Nepal for Canada. Um, or, or uh, yeah. So uh, I, I was fortunate to, in those days, um, prior to these, uh, this diplomatic relations and increase in Nepal-Canada uh, dialogue and, um, and trade and cultural uh, exchanges. Uh, I was fortunate to go to Ottawa one time with a Nepalese diplomat uh, called uh, um, Jay Pratap Rana. Now, Mr. Rana was uh, the uh, Nepal's uh, ambassador for Canada, and he asked me, since I've been here uh, since uh, 1971, if uh, I would accompany him to meet uh, and participate in the dialogue with the with the with the uh, the foreign ministry of uh, of Canada at that time, now Global Affairs, which I think is a very appropriate name. Um, so, so I went in there, and what amazed me was the Canadian government, um, including CEDA, um, understanding and love for Nepal, how Nepal supported the Canadian policy um, globally, um, disarmament. The Nepalese contribution uh, is well recognized by Canada. So when I became the Honorary Council for uh, 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 Nepal here in Canada. That same year, I went back to uh, 
Kathmandu uh, after 30 years absence, I might say. And the then prime minister, Mr. Girija Prasad Koirala, um, uh, told me that, look, we, the Nepalese, see global, global affairs. They were with the same worldview as Canada does. We have a lot of commonality. And the Canadians uh, have fought uh, together with the Nepalese during the, the great wars, World War I, World War II. So, uh, and so while it is not publicized in a big way, there is no doubt in my uh, experience and mine that the Canada and Nepal relations are much more intimate than we are publicizing. So one of the things that the Federation of uh, Canada and Nepal Chamber of Commerce should do is to try to, to bring it out, you know, by way of maybe occasional newsletter publications, etc. Also in 1993, we, uh, when I became the, uh, the honorary counsel here in Toronto, uh, um, the University of Toronto South Asian Studies uh, Graduate School, they said, will you join hands with uh, us to create um, a seminar? So we developed a seminar for economic development of Nepal, you know, opportunities, et cetera. And we followed that in 1995 also, um, that that was well attended by the, the Canadian um, business groups, as well as people in politics and government. And that uh, actually led to a number of trips officially uh, from Canada to Nepal. In 1995, Ontario, for example, which is one of the largest provinces in Canada, uh, sent a delegation uh, to South Asia, you know, co through the cooperation. Uh, and they went to uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, and then, uh, then, then ultimately Nepal. When I was told about that the delegation was going, it, headed by the by the way, uh, Minister for International Trade, I said, we would like to meet with the Prime Minister. And they said, oh, we'd love to do that, but you know, uh, it was too short a notice. I said, don't worry. So, you know, in Nepal, the bureaucracy is very small. You know, people communicate very quickly. So we were able to get um, the Canadian delegation, including Bob Huguet, who was the then the, Canada, the, the, the uh, Minister for International Trade in uh, Ontario to uh, meet with the, with the highest uh, political uh, the leader of the government. Uh, so, and uh, we've had, uh, uh, prior to the monarchy's uh, abolition in Nepal, we had kings visit Canada, uh, sometimes informally, but they were here. Uh, we had the guy, uh, the, the general, four-star general, um, uh, Mr. General Thapa, uh, come here and, you know, visit uh, Canada. And I, I took an opportunity to introduce him to a number of people. So uh, when I went to Nepal, I remember Mr. Ketan's uh, uh, dad, pa, father, you know, he... He was uh, very interested in learning about Canada because he was going to collaborate on Arun 3 project that Canada was, was part of. Uh, I think we have to do a lot more uh, in terms of seminars, symposium, uh, groups visiting uh, each other countries uh, than, uh, than, than just uh, hope that it will you know, automatically come out. The effort needs a, a focus and the creation of this Federation of uh, Canada and Nepal Chamber of Commerce, in fact, gives us the, the structure, the institution 
that can do things. Um, so I, I don't want to take too long a time. I would be extremely uh, interested and uh, willing to help the Federation if the Federation were to take on one or the other. Uh, we also, I should in passing mention that we had a Nepal caucus in Parliament of Canada um, not too many uh, years ago. Now, I don't know whether the new parliament has that Nepal caucus, but it is something that the Federation should look into and we could ask uh, Ambassador Dungana to also uh, sort of help us out uh, since he's based in Ottawa. And all of these things is going to be wonderful for the, uh, for the uh, two countries um, that, you know, I am interested in and the group, group here has an interest. Thank you very much, Mr. Pardo. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, our Honorary Consulate uh, General for Toronto, um, Mr. Sarma. You have been uh, a great mentor to FC and CCN and great advisor. Like whenever we need help, we are all, you are always there to easily accessible to us. And thank you for your great um, mentioning various aspects of our bilateral relationship. And next speaker we have today is uh, Consulate General for Calgary, Alberta, uh, Mr. Steve Hess. Please go ahead, uh, Consulate General. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Podell, and uh, good day to everyone on the call. Uh, I certainly echo the comments of my ambassador with respect to the the, the bilateral trade and uh, and other affairs between Canada uh, and uh, Nepal. And it certainly shows how strong those are in the length of time that Canada and Nepal have had these diplomatic relationships. Uh, my role in, in as consul in Calgary uh, is largely to engage and continue to engage with the government of Alberta. Uh, and I was grateful that, that Garnet mentioned the energy sector uh, because it is of course such a large part of the Alberta economy. But the fundamental strength that we have in Alberta in relation to Nepal is the, uh, the large uh, and, and, and considerable engagement of the 15,000 person uh, Nepali diaspora that is in the province. Uh, whether they are uh, middle managers as they sit in Calgary uh, or Edmonton, uh, oil workers in Fort McMurray, uh, the uh, students that are at the University of Calgary, the uh, tourism, uh, the people who work in the tourism industry in the mountain areas, including uh, Everest summiteers, uh, Sherpas who work in that industry, uh, they all contribute considerably, uh, not only to the economy in Alberta, but to an understanding of uh, Nepal and, and make my job easy in terms of being able to speak about uh, Nepal to the government of Alberta. Uh, it's also relatively easy to uh, speak to Nepalis in Nepal about Alberta. Uh, in, during my trips uh, to Nepal, I've had the pleasure of interacting with the Canadian Honorary Consul in, uh, uh, in Kathmandu, uh, Dr. Buddha Basnyat, who has strong ties to the University of Calgary. So at, at the end of the day, Alberta has uh, a significant position uh, and a significant role to play in terms of helping attract business to Nepal because of the strength of uh, the Nepali diaspora. So uh, with that, I, again, I, Mr. Bodal, I congratulate you on putting this seminar together and look forward to many more years of uh, diplomatic relations, relations between Canada and Nepal. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Consulate General, Mr. Steve Hess, uh, for making your time and um, looking forward to work with you together in the future as well. Uh, so next uh, guest we have today is uh, Mr. Mohan Krishna Fresta from Nepal, and he's a former ambassador for France. Uh, <clears throat> um, as a former ambassador and uh, 30 years of diplomatic experience, uh, um, experience like what should be our priorities to open Canadian visa and trade office in Nepal? As well, as we all know, Canada only have one consulate general office in, in Kathmandu, Nepal, with limited opening hours, while Nepal has one embassy and four consulate office in Canada. 
Why do you think uh, Canada is not being able to reciprocate the same? Mr. Uh, Mohan Krishnas Rester, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. It's okay, audible now? Yeah, it's audible. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bijayji, and also thanks to moderator ISG also. Actually, uh, I have prepared my text so that not to miss any points. And I'll, I'll also come to that point where which you have asked. Okay, and uh, I would like to begin by uh, extending my warm wishes to your, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Priku Dungana and to distinguished panelists at this webinar, distinguished audience in Canada and in other countries. I say good morning, good evening from Nepal and good morning in Canada. First of all, I wish to thank President BJ Podil of Federation of Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce for this kind invitation. I'm really pleased to attend this webinar to celebrate the 57th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Nepal and Canada and hosting of this important webinar with a purpose to promote Canada-Nepal trade. Congratulations and best wishes. Time has changed and it seems these days trade actually is the blessing aid. I consider that the establishment of the UFC and CC is a seminal step. This pioneering work is worthy of praise and support from all. Thanks and appreciation to all those involved in the formation of this forum. I'm sure UFC and CC's future activities will prove instrumental for the promotion of trade relations between our two countries. Trade, commerce, and investment are three pillars of the economy of any country. These sectors have em emerged as major components of the economic development. With the establishment of the World Trade Organization in 1995, countries started indulging in free trade, rule-based trade, and trying to develop their trade practices on the basis of comparative and competitive advantage. Countries like Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, Singapore have benefited much from such trade practices. They lack any type of natural resources. Eight, they have catapulted their economies to much success as well as develop their trade, commerce, and investment sectors massively. No country is independent from the, these sectors and country-wise trade relations are based on complementarity. While we talk about the trade between our two countries, we find that imports from Canada is heavy while export from Nepal is still very low. Trade pattern is also cumbersome to Nepal side as our exports consist of only primary and territory producers fetching low prices. Socioeconomic situation between our two countries also vary greatly. Canada is highly developed while Nepal is a landlocked and least developed country. In Nepal, industrial development has not reached to that point level, producing many goods for exports. Nepal's trade imbalance ratio is about 14 to one between imports and exports. Country's economy has become virtually import-based. All these facts pose great challenges to our country. Regarding trade between our two countries, we feel we greatly need to enhance export from Nepal to Canada. We have many producers like woolen carpets, warm possible producers, organic tea, coffee, handcrafted goods for decorated homes, and many organic herbal products for good for human body. Many of our producers might be appealing to multicultural lobbying Canadian citizens. It is therefore incumbent on EFC and CC to take appropriate steps to introduce such Nepali goods to the Canadian consumers. I hope that thousands of Nepalese producers might have good markets in Canada, which ultimately might trigger to a big import volume in future. In this field, FC and NCC need to work assiduously to identify market opportunities for Nepalese producers. Nepal has been implementing economic diplomacy since 1996, with six main objectives like promotion of exports, tourism, EFDI, foreign employment, deployment of water resources, and increment in foreign aid. Five among these might have good opportunities for promotion in Canada. I therefore hold a view at a macro level that FC and CC should work following these steps as much as possible. Host trade shares on a regular basis, build contacts with the Chamber of Commerce in big cities, build contact with the importers and distributors, opening of outlets for Nepalese producers, host seminars and webinars at interval, in, interval times, exchange of views with the business leaders, exchange of trade relations between the two countries and other step as deemed appropriate. In such efforts, our diplomatic mission must also extend full cooperation to EFC and CC. Their joint efforts will accrue success and benefit in due course of time. Since several years, 
Nepalese economy has been expanding due to liberalization and deregulation. And we have a GDP of about $35 billion. More avenues are being opened and available for international business in many areas of agriculture, biodiversity, industry, tourism, and water resource development. United businessmen can explore such opportunities in our country under FDI. Government is taking actions to make FDI more conducive, offering many requisite facilities at par with interest standards. We also expect Canada to open its diplomatic mission in Nepal in coming days on reciprocal basis. Such move can help business community of both countries in appropriate ways for mutual benefit. As Nepal is set to graduate from least developed status to developing country status by 2026 AD, we in fact together need to re-energize our exercises to further develop, expand and increase our export base as widely possible. We must produce diversified products for export to near and far markets. With new status, Nepal will need more understanding and cooperation from the government and people of Canada in coming days. Before concluding, I wish to extend my cordial greetings and best wishes to FC and CC for overall success in their endeavors to promote trade with, between our two countries and in particular export from Nepal to Canada markets. Thank you. Now, uh, referring to your question about honorary consul, that is an interesting practice on the Vienna Convention of uh, 1964. Any country can appoint uh, the, um, the person to a post, but uh, not in the capital where there is uh, the, there is embassy. Like, like uh, you have Canada has one honorary consul in Kathmandu. Uh, suppose someday if the Canadian embassy is established in Kathmandu, he cannot work there, but they can they can appoint somewhere in Virat Nagar, Birgan, Pokhara, or other cities, you know. And we have uh, we have embassy in Ottawa and other uh, honorary consul. And now, just I listen to Calgary and some other cities, maybe also I, I don't know exactly right now. This is a general practice. It depends on the need, need of the government being felt. Okay, and uh, before the before the appointment, the um, uh, approbation of the uh, government is uh, necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mohan Krishnasrestha. Especially, you have like uh, la long, uh, last long, like almost thirty years of diplomatic relations uh, experience. Uh, so, I really appreciate that uh, and uh, your point of views. Uh, next uh, guest we have uh, today is uh, is uh, Mr. Sekhar Golsa and uh, he's the president of FNCCI, Federation of Nepalese, uh, Nepalese uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Mr. Sekhar Golsa, please. Um, is he on the screen? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Please. Especially uh, before you start, I just want to hear on the, um, uh, like including the bilateral relations and all. I want to hear from you, especially on the, as a president of FNCCI, like what are the laws regarding IPI, IPR, intellectual property right? Is that uh, sufficient in Nepal and uh, how has it impacted the flow of FDI in Nepal? So please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Vijayji, uh, your excellencies and uh, all the people who have joined in in Zoom, I'm sorry, I'm uh, I'm a bit late as I was uh, part of another program. Uh, well, uh, as far as the intellectual right rules is concerned, there's a you know there is a, a lot of consciousness and uh, uh, there is a lot of effort which is going on for us to improve it. However, uh, you know there is still a lot of challenges. Uh, you know, if you uh, look at it in relative terms, I think uh, there's a you know, there's been a, a lot of improvement in, in, in implementation of the existing laws and also uh, modifying the laws uh, further to international standards. Uh, however, uh, we are far from uh, where we should have reached. FNCCI, uh, through our trading committee, we have put in a special effort. And uh, we've been uh, we, uh, that, you know, for any FDI to come into, inside the country, intellectual rights or intellectual properties has to be protected. And uh, this is uh, probably uh, the very important concern for all the FDI. So we've been working hard on it, uh, but uh, I have to uh, admit that uh, still uh, there's a lot more to be done. Vijay, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for making that, uh, for clearing that. So um, I see that, uh, like, how is it for all, 
the scenario, the situation of business environment in Nepal, like uh, especially we see Nepal is ranked as the uh, as a number uh, number ninety four in ranking of ease of doing the business. Like for uh, NR uh, people like all over who is all over the country, uh, all over uh, the world. Uh, what do you think? How how easy it is to uh, start up for the NRNs? <laughs> so uh, I always tell this, you know, uh, the ease of doing business is just one parameter. Uh, ultimately, it's uh, uh, the profits, you know, is the return on equity, you know, uh, which is the which affects the FDI the most. However, uh, coming to the ease of doing business, uh, we are improving. Uh, if you see the last uh, uh, research we had. However, uh, you know, uh, having said this, uh, there's a lot more to be done. Uh, as you know, for large investment, we have now an investment board, uh, we call it the IBN, uh, which uh, has got a one window uh, uh, solution for, you know, for getting all the approvals. Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, it can be further improved. Uh, we have recently, uh, on a process of signing an MOU, which probably we're going to uh, be signing uh, uh, next week, uh, you know, in presence of the finance minister. Uh, this MOU will also enable us that, you know, all the cases which is not taken up because IBN takes only the large investments and all the uh, smaller investments, uh, uh, we will FNCCI as the apex body. So we have set up a special cell to take up uh, these issues to facilitate uh, FDI. Uh, so uh, we feel that uh, we will probably look into further improving uh, ease of uh, doing business for uh, FDIs. Thank you so much, uh, Sekarji, for making your important time and remarks. We'll, we'll uh, catch up with you again. Uh, thank you so much for now. And next guest we have today from Nepal is uh, Mr. Rajendra Ketan. Um, uh, Rajendra Ketan, uh, you especially carry a profile of uh, top 10 richest Nepalese in the world, uh, despite the challenges. What do you want to say to the people who talk about the political instability, lack of policies and investment insecurities in Nepal? Um, over to you, uh, Mr. Rajendra Ketan. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to see that. Uh, MPs, Honorable MPs, uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, our my one uncle, Kunja Sarmaji, is here. My long-standing friend, Tulsi uh, Dharalji, is here. I'm very happy to see all of you. Ambassador Vrigu uh, has been a very uh, diplomatically strong uh, representative for Nepal in Canada. Well, uh, Nepal is very, in terms of law, in terms of policy, in terms of directives in terms of uh, <clears throat> overall scenario, uh, everything is placed very well. There is no barrier in law, there is no barrier in policy, there is no barrier in uh, you know investment security, there is no barrier in other things. There are a few things we need to do like uh, avoiding double tax, uh, uh, double taxation between Canada and Nepal, mm -hmm. uh, study some uh, subjects like uh, what could be potential for Canada to for Nepal? What could be potential area for Nepal uh, in Canada, uh, including uh, new technologies, including infra infrastructure, uh, maybe something innovative? Uh, you know, this thing has to be studied further. Uh, the only barrier and problem which I see, I'm not only talking about the positive side, the red tapism and bureaucracy which I think everywhere it's a trouble. But I think uh, looking at South Asia, Nepal stands in a better position. Things are being done, uh, you know. Uh, we have recently established Nepal Marketing Association led by Tulsi Dahilji and with the private sector as totally supporting him blankly. Uh, so things are moving very well. Uh, as I proposed in last meeting, I think we should take up a few subjects like uh, finding out uh, areas of uh, economic cooperation between Nepal and Canada, what and where Canada is interested, what and where Nepal is interested, we should uh, uh, you know, try to um, explore and exploit these areas. I remember uh, Canadian High Commissioner's representative visiting me and uh, Kiran, I think it's Kiran, somebody from Canada also being in touch with me 
and we've been working together for many times. Uh, so I think uh, we need to work together closely. And this forum could be one from where we can stand together to see that the trade and economy, social economy, economy and trade, I mean, can be uh, grown together for the prosperity of both the countries. Thank you, Bidiji. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rajinder Ketan, for your very, very uh, important and significant uh, contribution to the uh, Nepalese economy and uh, you have been the champion as a global entrepreneur as well and we are looking forward yeah. can to I intervene on your uh, issue sorry yeah can I intervene on your issue of intellectual property rights sure sure please go ahead yeah. well uh, when we signed WTO in 2003 uh, Nepal is bound to respect intellectual property rights that is trips you know and uh, the law is in position with the department within the uh, Department of Industry, I suppose, or Department of uh, Company Registrar. So things are in place. The arbitration and legal issues are being handled very well. Uh, and the if still, the, it cannot be resolved, it goes to the court. And Nepal has to respect uh, the global phenomena on, uh, you know, uh, rights of the uh, intellectual property. Uh, be it commodity, be it uh, the brand, be it whatever it is. Uh, but there are certain loopholes on the law side, which has to be rectified, and we are seeking the support of the commercial bench of the court to handle it so that specialized law, uh, you know, um, uh, lawyers and specialized uh, decision makers are in place to look at the specific requirement of the intellectual property rights. But so far, Nepal matches the global standard in terms of WTO, as I have been working with WTO since 2000, and I see and I observe and I work with them, and I know that it is in fact. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rajinder Ketan. Next guest we have today is uh, Mr. I mean, Dr. Tulsi Darel. Um, Dr. Tulsi Darel, welcome to the webinar. Thank you, thank you, Vijayji. I might be the last person <laughs> to say something, or, maybe. Or let me, let me go to... Like uh, Dr. Okay. Darrell has been a marketing guru and has recently founded uh, and formed a Nepal Marketing Association in Nepal. So uh, how do you think Nepal should brand itself in the international market in terms that, of trade? That is a good point. I'm, I'm just focusing on that part rather than talking in more things. Uh, first of all, let me, let me tell you that I teach international marketing at Centennial College for the last 20 plus years. And my area, what I teach in the class I see that that can be applied here in Nepal as well as in Canada. For your kind information and all our audience, uh, the information that I'm also part of a Canadian Marketing Association as a brand council member. And you might have seen in the chat box, I had uh, just uh, sent that uh, the letter which uh, was sent by uh, the president of Canadian Marketing Association. Uh, this is a felicitation uh, uh, later to Nepalese Marketing Association. As uh, Rajendra Ketanji mentioned already, I met him a couple of times in his office. And then also Golsa Group is a very a close uh, member of the Nepalese Marketing Association. Here, the point is how we can expand our bilateral relationship, not only from the government side, from the, not from the, not for the government side as well. So let's say example, NGOs, and the public area and the business uh, councils and many other areas. So this is important. And I think even me and BJG and many of our Nepalese uh, uh, diaspora living in Canada could play a breeze role in between making a good relations in between these two countries. I am here in Nepal for the last four months. I'm teaching from here online to my Centennial students. And during this period of time, what I have learned in Canada what I am engaged in Canada, I'm applying that in Nepal as well. That is why in the last month, we have established successfully Nepalese Marketing Association, which is very similar like American Marketing Association and Canadian Marketing Association. So this could be, this could be a kind of milestone to expand Nepalese businesses in the world. Now the relation between these two countries, let's say, Example, when you are thirsty, you need to go to water. Water would not come to you. Similarly, Canada and Nepal, there are a lot of similarity, but there are a lot of this, you know, there may be it's not 
similar in, in case of the economic advancement, in case of so many other resources. So in this case, Nepal needs to do more than Canada. What I think from Nepalese government side, Nepalese public business side as well, you know, we need to make a good relations. We have to expand our business more than before. As I see that since now we established our diplomatic relationship from uh, since uh, 1965, uh, around a half billion dollar of uh, support we have, uh, Nepal has received from Canada. And if you see the import and export ratio in 2018, uh, record shows that about more than $100 million export from Canada to Nepal, whereas Nepal has exported less than $10 million around. So this is why the dim imbalance of the businesses. Nepal is a fertile land, we know. We have uh, so much possibilities here in Nepal to invest. So in that case, Nepal need to make a really good welcoming environment to the Canadian investors and Canadian, a lot of other, uh, the people that who could be a very big attraction uh, to the Nepalese beautiness, Nepalese, uh, the fertile land, you know, there's so many different ways. What I see here, finally, I wanna just tell you that from my side, from your side, from other side, Nepal needs more support from Canada. So that is why it is important to make a good relationship with these two countries. And Nepal needs to do even more to attract Canadian investors into the Nepalese uh, industry and trade. Thank you so much, Vijayji. Thank you, Dr. Darel. Um, especially you have been an advisor of FCA and CC as well. And, uh, and you have been doing uh, doing a lot of uh, initiative and also like you are the 25 uh, immigrant award winner as well so we are expecting a lot from you in terms of working forward together and uh, especially concern nepal has been doing uh, this uh, bilateral relationship program in the previous years and uh, we are uh, continuing in the days uh, as a chamber of commerce as well so thank you so much for your very important uh, remarks and uh, next, um, we have uh, President NRNA Canada, Deepak Gautam, but I have not seen him so far. So I think we are like, uh, it's, it's been a, a long and engaging uh, conversation with all of you. And before uh, we conclude, uh, uh, I would like to take some views from our chief guest, uh, Ambassador Brigo Dungana. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vijayji. Today, uh, I, uh, I'm sure that uh, we have had a very good discussion and uh, uh, the various uh, the representatives from uh, different entities as well as uh, the prominent members of uh, the private sector and the business entrepreneurs uh, uh, made uh, their exceptional uh, remarks on how to enhance uh, trade uh, 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 investment and other economic activities between Nepal and Canada. And uh, I think uh, I have also taken note of several uh, concrete suggestions that uh, may need uh, uh, some kind of uh, consideration on the part of uh, our government. Uh, so on the part of the embassy, we would uh, continue uh, having uh, con uh, constructive engagement with the business community in Canada as well as in Nepal. and. Uh, I really look forward to facilitating uh, the more interdependence and interconnectedness between the uh, private sectors of the two countries so that we could uh, really uh, realize uh, this uh, greater trade and economic engagement between the two countries. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, our Ambassador Vigur Dungana. Um, I think this concludes our webinar. And uh, at the end, as a president of uh, Federation of Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce, I would like to thank our chief guest, His Excellency Ambassador Rigu Dungana, our special guest, uh, uh, keynote speaker, speakers, and all the panelists uh, for your precious time and input during this important um, milestone celebration of uh, India, uh, sorry, Nepal and Canada bilateral relationship. And uh, this is a perfect time to take Canada-Nepal bilateral relationship through the promotion of trade, um, through the promotion of trade as soon as we head towards the normality. Every country is looking to expand in terms of economic prosperity during this uh, economic uh, downturn. And it's time to shift our paradigm from sub-local to sub-global uh, very soon. 
I guess, and looking forward to work together with all the stakeholders in Nepal uh, and Canada to promote uh, trade in the days uh, to come. Thank you, all the panelists and um, our moderator, Aisa Gurung, uh, and all the executive team of FCNCC for making this uh, uh, happen and uh, everyone joining live at canadacover.com and making this program a, a successful event. And we'd like to see all of you in the future of webinars and our webinar series that will be organized by uh, Chamber of Commerce in the days to come as well. And uh, thank you once again. And um, uh, um, yeah, this concludes our seminar. Thank you so much. And I'd like to end live here. Thank you. <laughs>